tendonitis, tendinosis, or tendinopathy. There are a lot of different terms to describe tendon pain, but do they all mean the same thing or are they actually different? In this video, we'll discuss all of these terms and why it actually matters. First, let's talk about tendonitis, which is easily the most commonly used term to describe tendon pain. And this is when we thought that the pathology of tendon pain was inflammatory driven, which is why most of the treatments were anti-inflammatory, so using things like NSAIDs or corticosteroid injections for the treatment of tendon pain. However, for tendon pain, it appears that inflammation isn't the main driver of this condition. Instead, it appears to be an overload condition, which is where the loads placed on the tendon have exceeded what it can tolerate. And loading doesn't necessarily just mean that we ran longer or we lifted something heavier. There are a lot of other factors that contribute to overloading. So, for example, we need to look at both frequency and duration of the load. So, if we're looking at running, maybe the intensity has increased because we incorporated some trails or we started doing some hill running. Same thing when we look at weightlifting, maybe we increased our frequency. So maybe we're lifting two or three times per week where we used to only lift once per week. We need to make sure that we're accounting for all those things that could contribute to overload. And just because tendon pain is not an inflammatory condition doesn't mean that inflammation is completely irrelevant in these conditions. We do see that there are some inflammatory markers that are present with these conditions. However, we just wanna make sure that we're not focusing on the inflammatory portion of it, but we're actually looking at the loading, which is actually causing that inflammatory response. And this brings us to our next term for tendon pain, which is tendinosis. So after a little bit more research, what they found is that for some people with tendon pain, they actually didn't have any inflammation. And so the term tendinitis wasn't accurate because there was no inflammation causing the pain. And what they actually did see was that there were structural changes to the tendon, which they termed tendinosis. And there are a variety of different structural changes that we see with tendinosis. So for example, tendons are typically made out of primarily type one collagen, but with tendinosis, we see that there's a transition to type three collagen in response to the persistent overloading. Additionally, what we see is that the tendon typically gets a little bit thicker as well. And then we also have something called neovascularization, which is just a fancy term for saying that there's blood vessel formation in the tendon. And tendons typically don't have a good blood supply. So we see that in response to that loading, we see that there's some blood vessel formation trying to get some more nutrients to the tendon. While these structural changes to the tendon can sound scary, their relationship to pain really isn't all that clear. So we see these structural changes in those without tendon pain, and then we also see in those with persistent symptoms that they also have these structural changes to the tendon. So on one hand, we have those without any tendon pain have structural changes to the tendon, and then we also see those with persistent symptoms also have structural changes to the tendon. So it's not really clear what these structural uh, changes actually mean when it comes to pain and or function for that matter. And on top of this, when we look at rehab programs, it actually doesn't seem like we need to change those structural properties to the tendon to have a good outcome. So it's important to know that tendinosis only refers to structural changes that we might see on an ultrasound or an MRI. It actually doesn't give us a lot of information when we're looking at pain or function of the tendon. And this brings us to tendinopathy, which is the term that we use now to describe pain relating to the tendon. And it's generally divided into two different categories. We have acute and persistent tendinopathy, which just refers to the time that someone's been experiencing symptoms. An acute tendinopathy occurs when there's a sudden spike in loading. You can think about this like if one of your friends invites you to a 5K over the weekend and you haven't ran since high school PE class. And since it's this week, you don't really have enough time to train, so you just go run it over the weekend and now all of a sudden your Achilles tendon hurts a little bit. And generally for these types of presentations, we're focused on load management, which means that we're gonna have a short period of relative rest to allow the tendon to calm down and adapt to the loads that we just placed on it. And this doesn't mean complete rest where we lay on the couch and don't put any load on the tendon, but maybe we avoid some of the higher loads. So for the Achilles tendon, we might not be running or jumping for a little bit, just to allow that tendon to calm down. A persistent tendinopathy occurs when the overloading has been going on for a long period of time and the tendon hasn't been able to adapt to those loads. So typically we'll do a little bit of load management of course because we don't want the tendon to be continually irritated just based on comfort. But for these conditions, we're actually gonna be working on a gradual strength training program because we wanna get the tendon to be able to tolerate those loads. So I'll put a couple of examples of exercise progressions for the Achilles tendon and also the patellar tendon down below. So that way you can see what those progressions would look like. So at this point of the video, you might be thinking, why does any of this matter? It's just a name, right? Well, a name can influence the direction of treatment as well as some of the outcomes. For example, if inflammation is thought to be the cause of tendon pain, which is what tendonitis suggests, 
then an anti-inflammatory treatment is going to be recommended. But what we see is that this approach isn't effective for long-term outcomes. And what we actually see is that a corticosteroid injection, for example, might actually weaken the tendon, which puts us at risk for a flare-up later on. Or if we're using the term tendinosis, then the focus of treatment is generally going to be on those structural changes that we see in the tendon. But as we discussed before, those structural changes don't tell the full picture when we look at pain or function of the tendon. Plus, if someone tells you that you have a degenerated tendon or that you have a bunch of structural changes to your tendon, then chances are you probably don't feel too comfortable loading it, although that is what the treatment is for persistent tendon pain. So using the appropriate terminology better reflects our understanding of what is causing the pain, which also helps to make sure that our treatments reflects our updated understanding. So hopefully this video on tendonitis, tendinosis, and tendinopathy was helpful. If it was, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. I'll leave some of those videos for the exercises down below. I'll see you in the next video.